Alright, how's it going? If you clicked on this, more than likely you are uh, somewhat of a beginner and you want to learn how to change your tire on your bicycle, which is fairly simple, but obviously if you've never done it before, it could be, I guess, a little daunting. Uh, if you like this, you can give me a like and subscribe. I'm trying to get more subscribers. I'm actually going to try to crank out a whole series of these because I'm like in the middle of ordering parts and uh, tuning up my bicycle myself and uh, I guess before we get into it what I've been using for the past couple years and actually what I recommend is uh, I don't I don't race or anything I just use my bicycle as commuter so I want more uh, reliability and uh, for there not to be any kind of puncture the least amount of punctures I can while I'm riding so I get the uh, Continental Grand Prix Four Seasons which are kind of like the more robust all season, four season of the uh, Gator Skins and I've been running these uh, for the last couple of years and they're pretty good I can usually get between two to three thousand miles on them uh, depending on the type of mileage and the weather conditions I will say because I do ride during the winter here up in Ohio and I will say that the salt <clears throat> during the winter conditions they have will uh, affect these more they will like induce more dry rot on them and then also like if you're putting your tires on there you, you think all right you're good but since these are more mileage, you need to rotate your tires. I mean, you could do it every 500 miles, but I would say every 1,000 miles you need to rotate it because when you have a, when you have it on the, because uh, this, I just did rotate these, and I noticed that uh, there is a little, uh, like, a uh, little mark or defect or, like, going to be an issue, a hole on the uh, sidewall here. So I decided to go ahead and buy a new set of tires. It just became spring, so that's good too. But with your tire being on the back the whole time, it'll eventually it will flatten out. Here you'll notice a little kind of like where it'll be a little flat. So you'll need to rotate it and put it on the front. And then when you're turning with the front, it'll round it back out. And the one that was on the front will start to occur the flat so kind of like a car you need to rotate them to kind of give them even wear i say about a thousand miles if you're using these type of tires uh if you're using more racing tires that have like less mileage probably more often maybe every 500 miles with that i mean if you you, you if it's really good like weather time riding and you push these to like 3,000 miles you could probably get away with 1500 but i would advise around a thousand so so essentially all you need is your, I'm going to do it with just the front tire. Obviously I'm going to be changing both of these, but I'll just show you with one. It's pretty much the same on both. Essentially all you need is your wheel, your tire, your inner tube, your new tire, a plastic, uh, I would, I guess it's called like a tire lever, tire lever. It's like a little thing so you can kind of pop it out. And of course you'll need a, uh, a bike pump. So let's uh, get into this. Obviously, the first thing you're going to need to do is uh, get the uh, air out of your tire. Then the inner tubes I have, which with most of the, I'd say most of the road bikes will run like a press of valves. Now I usually get ones that have kind of a, uh, I can't remember if it's like 42 or 48 millimeter, uh, what do you call it, maybe nib or whatever. Then what you're going to want to do is basically take this 
and put it in here and just pop it out. And essentially just kind of once you have it just start running it across the entire tire till it comes out like that. You push your little uh, stem up, get your inner tube out, kind of like that, then pull this off. And this is the old one. And this one has the defect, so I'm not. I'm gonna end up tossing this one out. But like I said, these tires I had only had a thousand miles on it. So what I'm gonna do is save the one tire that is still good without any kind of defects and just kind of have it as a backup tire in case I get some horrible puncture in the new set but I, I am replacing both to keep uh, to keep the mileage and the tread and everything similar with each and like I said I'll have a backup if something happens so put it here I think these, see these these used to, a couple years ago, these were like 75 bucks a piece. But now you can get them, like I got them on Amazon, so I'll probably just link the, uh, I'll link the, I'll link the link below to get them if you want to get them. Uh, make sure you're getting the right size, because I have 25 millimeter tires. So make sure you know you're like, it's 700C. 25 for me, make sure you know whether you're 23, 25, 28, 32, whatever it is. Make sure you get the right sizing. They're handmade in Germany. I've had a lot of good uses out of this. But like I say, I'd rather have, if it, like I don't race, like I said, I commute with my bike. If it slowed me down for a little bit, I mean, that's fine. I'd rather not have a puncture. Because I know the first time I tried these, I like ran them like 800, like on this previous set, I've run them like 1,000, 1,100 miles, haven't had, well, I guess I've had one uh, flat. But usually you get like, honestly, the type of terrain and stuff matters too, what you're riding over trying to avoid debris as much as you can but I've had like minimal flats which I'd rather have a heavier tire and not have flats where I commute so also when you're putting this on here you should find a th uh, an indication on the side if I can find it here it'll tell you we can see it here, maybe down here. It'll have an indication which way it's supposed to actually. It'll have it'll say rotation, and it'll point that way. So make sure you're putting it on the proper way. I'm not sure if all tires have this, but this one does. Or it tells you which way it's going to rotate because it has the tread pattern going in a certain direction. So you have the uh, rotation going that way to get the best use out of the pattern and the ability for it to grip and all that stuff. And when you get new ones too, it'll be like this kind of raised uh, seam in the middle. Obviously that will wear down over time. So let's put this on. So I gotta figure out which way this rotates. Uh, and usually with these, they'll have uh, one side that's a little bit more flimsy than the other one. And usually you need to find the side that's a little bit stiffer and then you'll slide that in first. We'll put it. I mean, these tires are new, they want to like refold up a lot, so. Put this on here. Get that in there like that. So you put one side of it in here. And these are, these type of tires are called clinchers, which if you're commuting, I would advise getting clinchers in case you need to in case you're out and you need to uh, fix a flat, you can do that. Take your inner tube, stick it back in. Like 
such. Then with these, it has kind of like a little, I don't know exactly what you call it, but it's a, uh, it's almost like a little washer nut that will keep it in place. Then just put this in, make sure you don't have any kinks or anything in there. Put it in like that. To make sure that's up. And we'll just start putting this in. If you're rotating, it should be easier because they'll be kind of stretched out, but with new tires, they may be a little bit stiffer and a bit more difficult to put in. But when you're putting in two, you want to make sure the inner tube is like in there and it doesn't get pinched. Like I've, I've, uh, I've uh, replaced a flat before and I wasn't paying attention. I was like inflating it and the inner tube had got, the inner tube had got pinched here. And of course when you did that, it just blows. So now I'll show you a little trick too, when you're kind of inflating to make sure that it doesn't happen. But yeah, we just want to make sure that it's in there. Then we'll like, we'll work to the far end here like this. And like I said, with these being new tires, it may be a little bit more difficult to Gotta make sure the inner tube is. See, the inner tube's wanting to stick out at the end, but we got a way to <clears throat> make sure it doesn't. I just kind of go through and try to pinch it up a little bit to make sure the inner tube is actually up in the tire and it won't get pinched itself. And what I'll do now, I'll put about 20 pounds of pressure, about, yeah, about 20 pounds in there. Now I'll do it again so it gives the inner tube a bit of inflation. You go through around and we'll pinch it again just to make sure that uh, there is none that is actually pinched. And then get a good floor pump too. Like I said, put about 20 PSI in there. Now you'll, it may vary on tire to tire, but usually road tires, the uh, recommended PSI is around 90 to 120. I usually run around, depending on the weather, about 105. If it's a little bit drier, I may go up to 110. If the weather's a little bit worse or there's rain, I may run like around 100. Because if you have a little bit of less, in there like the tire will bend a little bit more so you get a little bit more grip and traction on the road and obviously if it's like completely dry asphalt and hasn't rained in a while 110 will get you better they call it i guess a uh, rotational like better rotation and less i don't know they call it some kind of like rotation or something like that push this up in here make sure this isn't pinched then we'll you may have to do like 10 or 15 PSI, but just basically go around and push back and forth to make sure the inner tube itself is not going to be caught in between the bottom of the tire and the the rim wall so it doesn't blow up when you fully inflate it. And of course you can use the uh, stem here as your starting stopping point. It seems to be good. So I'll pump it up to what I say like 105 maybe 110 something like that. But it can go up to 120. I know depending on the tire size itself and your bike and your individual weight yourself, it can vary what the specific PSI is you'll put in there. But like I said, I'll run usually around between 100 and 110 for me. 
seems to be a pretty decent spot for me. About at 80 right now. 90. I'm like at 100. 103, maybe 105. So around 105, I'll run it. We have that. Put that to the side. And uh, make sure we tighten that little washer nut up. Make sure we close the little valve nib. Put your little, I don't know, I don't know, you call it a little safety nib thing back on there as well. And you're done in less than 20 minutes and that was me talking about it. So if you know how to do it, you can probably get it done in like five, 10 minutes for each one. It's not that big of an issue. Like I said, I'm gonna like be, I got some of the parts in. I'm gonna be doing, you know, cause I have to tune up my bicycle cause my uh, shifting cable started to fray. And I just realized it'd be way cheaper and I've ordered parts off of Amazon and I'll be tuning it up myself. Uh, actually, I just posted a video about me doing bike delivery uh, with uh, Postmates and Uber Eats. If you want to check it out, I think it'd be probably over on this side. I could be wrong. I think it's on this side, though. Uh, if you want to check that out, I did that back a few months ago. When the weather gets better, I may start doing it again. That's another reason I'm doing a tune-up. Then, of course, with the issue going on, we all know what the issue is. If I say what it is, then they'll, they may strike this video. But food delivery is more is more important than it has been before. If you don't want to do it with your car, if you don't have a car, you can do it with your bicycle, download the Postmates or the Uber Eats app. So I'm, when the what, I get this all tuned up and the weather's a little bit better, I, I like myself, I may myself start doing that again for a little bit of extra cash. I explain it that so you can go check that out. But uh, if you like this video, you can give it a like. You really like it, you subscribe. I'm around at 248 time of filming this. I'm trying to hit that thousand subscriber mark. And I'll try to get some more bicycle content out. I may actually get a, uh, what was that video I was talking about? I filmed on my cell phone. I may actually get a GoPro and start doing that and filming that if people are more interested, if people are interested in that itself. There's other people that's done it. But I mean, you can, I'm getting a little off subject, but you can make cash same day. I mean, you can have it, you go out and make like 50 bucks and have it deposit in your bank account that day. So that's very useful. But, uh, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do my other tire off camera because there's no need to show you the same thing again. But, uh, all right, peace.